Welcome to 230 Dudes, I'm Antonio. And I'm Charles. And tonight we're drinking a Tuscany red wine, so from Italy. It's actually from Italy. It's actually from Italy. I've been Italy. to Tuscany. I have, a, so have I. It's, yeah. it's nice. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. very nice area. Um, it's where Chianti comes from. Mm-hmm. Um, this is the an Il Viale. It's a 2010. It's a red blend, so it's got different kinds of grapes. Yes, Charles read this to me as we were partaking. And I, what is it like? Syrah, Merlot, Sauvignes, and Cabernet Sauvignon. I just assumed it was like all the leftover grapes that didn't make the cut, they just kind of threw into a batch. Could be. Could be. <laughs> I think there's a little bit of science to the blend. Maybe. Like, it's like, this needs more pepper. It's like, it needs more Cabernet Sauvignon grapes. Well, based off the way it tastes, um, I think it kind of tastes like, you know, when you do the, uh, what do they call it, a suicide soda? Yeah, you taste when, like, that? When you, no, when you, when you do too many and it ends up kind of tasting... Oh, you don't like it? Like nothing. Uh, oh, okay. It's kind of bland. Yeah. It's not bad. What I think is no one would ever hate this one. No, they wouldn't hate it. Right. But it also wouldn't be like, oh, I got to get that Il Viale. Right. Yeah. Eh. It came from the BevMo 5 cent wine sale, so you buy one bottle, get a second one for 5 cents. I'm just upset. I'm just upset that it came from Tuscany and it wasn't like this. A knockout. Amazing. Yeah. That's probably why it was part of the 5 cent wine sale. Yeah, uh, maybe. That's my guess. And why, you know. Because they just do all the leftover yeah, that grapes too. off the floor <laughs> to make it. <laughs> so that was the wine. And uh, we've got a great podcast for you tonight all about the Underground Railroad. Yes. Pretty fascinating. We're going to kind of go over the general idea of the railroad, how it worked, a lot of things you didn't know, and then follow a little bit of Harriet Tubman's life. That's right. And so while that railroading story is based in truth, what we thought we'd do tonight is talk about a railroading story that's more of a myth. Yes, Mr. John Henry. John Henry, the steel-driving man. Now, I do have to say this, because I was a little bit hesitant in doing this, right? Um, One, because I grew up knowing John Henry's story is kind of a racist story. Uh, And then when I got to college, the racism symbolism was explained to me. Do I agree with all of it? Eh. Charles also mentioned, like, well, all folktales lie in some sort of stereotype. You know, so just know that in no way are we promoting what might be interpreted as a racist story. No. Especially not being attached to the Underground Railroad. No. Yeah, so I, I just want to put that out yeah, there. Yeah, and I, and I agree. And so what we're going to do is just talk a little bit about what the story is, just a little bit about this American folktale. Yes. Now, he was a former slave. Yes. Who ended up becoming a, what, what do you, a railroad... Steel-driving steel man. Steel-driving man, yeah. yeah. Uh, he pounded in stakes on a railroad, and he was the biggest, strongest, and fastest of anybody that worked for his company, which was called the... Chesapeake and Ohio Company, or the CNO. 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 Um, and they're doing this whole cross country train track. But they run into a big red mountain. A mountain, a huge mountain. And of course, like any good businessman, you're not going to put extra money about going around the mountain. No, no. Now we're going to go straight through that motherfucker. Right. right. Exactly. And so as they're finishing blowing the holes through it and getting ready to lay the track. And everybody dying. Everybody, tons of people died during this process. Uh, a, a businessman shows up, and he says, what I have here is a steam-powered machine that can drive stakes into a train track better than any man can. And you know who stepped up to the challenge? Good old John Henry. John Henry, with one hammer in each hand, 20-pound sledgehammers in each hand, Yep. against this machine, and they start driving stakes. Yep. They go for 35 minutes, which is a really random time. And super long. Yeah. Yeah. But, of course, in the end, John Henry prevails. He tie, or drives more stakes down than the machine does. And everybody's cheering and clapping, but they don't really notice that John Henry's teetering a little bit and a little woozy until he collapses, and very vividly they describe the hammers rolling out of his grasp. And he dies. Yes. I'm assuming from a heart attack. <laughs> yeah, I would think so. <laughs> right? Shit. Uh... <laughs> So what he does is he, he, he damns the man, basically, but then, um, but then he perils. So he perils. It's, uh, it's kind of a sad story, but also kind of this, this like overcoming of odds type tale. And there's a huge overcoming of odds with this episode, talking about the Underground Railroad, Harriet Tubman, and some stuff you may just not have known about. The entire network, as we found out they call it. Yes, the network. We found it fascinating. Um, we really, really enjoy doing the research on this one, and we think that you will find it just as fascinating. So definitely check us out. 
8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on 230dudes.com, iTunes, Stitcher, and Spreaker. We're also on Snapchat now. You can follow us at TWO30dudes.com, and uh, we're trying to post more and more on there. Yes, or he's trying I'm to. doing it. I, I, I keep forgetting. It's okay. He's the one that posts on everything else. Okay, that'll work. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, thanks for watching.